two white, 20 green. Oh my God. Yes guys, a lot of you asked for my free kick routine. Here it is. Just that part of the ball, that's all I'm looking at. Yes guys, what's going on? This is a highly requested video, Jonah Football. How do I take my free kicks? I've got Abby here, who's an absolute legend, aka Levante, that's what I've always called her. She actually takes free kicks for the team, so I'm gonna look at her free kick technique, I'm gonna try and break it down, give her a few tips. I'm gonna hit a few, she's gonna hit a few. I'm gonna keep the camera rolling, yeah, and just sort of show you guys how I coach someone with free kicks. So I'm gonna let Levante hit three or four and just look at what routine she takes and where on the ball she's hitting, the result. Now that, just before we start, that wall is ridiculously high. We're looking at like a six foot plus wall there. And we've gone in quite a particular spot on the pitch as well. You ready? Levante. It's not bad, you know, you've won a corner, yes. That, that's her first free kick, by the way. So she's probably just feeling the range, getting the range in. Yeah, nice, don't worry about that, yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, jeez Louise. Now that's definitely a goal. What do you do differently there? You just were tweaking it, weren't you, from the other five. Guys, this is the beauty of practice. The only thing I would say is you only get maybe one chance in a game. So that's why you have to hit 30, 40 here. Free kick specialists now in the modern game, women and men. So, so important. I would take, do you know James Ward-Prowse or not? Yeah, yeah I think you're just saying that. He, he is definitely the best um, set-piece specialist in the world for me. One chance, he's 90% success rate, it's ridiculous. So I would take him to the World Cup just on his free kicks alone. And I know that's not fair, but think of how many times we get free kicks in and around the box, corners, crosses into the box, they're massive. That's what I, I def, definitely towards the end of my career, built a reputation of taking free kicks and in around the box and got very, very good at him. There's a couple of things I've picked up on with you, Levante, okay? In order for us to get a little bit more consistent, just in case in a game, you obviously only get one try. But guys, you can see with the be beauty of practice there with, with Abby, every single one got better, didn't it? So you were tweaking it each time. I'm going to give you two coaching points at a time. We then focus on them coaching points, come back, might give you another one. So I'm not going to overload you with information. The first thing I've picked up on is I want you, because you mentioned off camera that you, they're a bit floaty. And when I was hitting a few, my aim is to always get it with as much speed as possible. So first thing you got to do with free kicks is definitely assess straight away where is the free kick. So is it here? Is it closer? Is it further out? And through practice, we have to get used to the range each and every time. So it, for me, in order to choose how much power we're going to put on it. Because when I was hitting them before, I was putting too much power on from here and it was going over every time. So I had to take a bit off it to get it to come back down. So I think right now, abs, we're quite far out now. It's quite far out. It's not ridiculously far out. It's a good, good position. I like this position. The first thing I've picked up on is your run up. I feel like you need to, so coaching point one, you need to run up to the ball faster. And that's going to get rid of, well, it's going to start to get rid of that floaty one. Because if you do a floaty one, it gives the keeper a chance to actually save it. All right. So the first thing I want you to do, some people have preferences of three step, four or five. I like a four, but it doesn't really matter because it, it, it literally all depends on how fast you run through the ball. So I go one, two, three and four. So not too far. That's given me a good enough distance to hit that shot now. However, I don't, I don't want to be coming here if you because you're going for the whip and up and down. I like to take almost, almost a 90 degree angle. But the first thing I want you to do, not too much coaching, is just run faster into the ball because it's going to allow you to have a better follow through and hopefully generate more power, okay? 
The way we're going to measure it is, I want you to try and hit the ball, abs, and just try and follow through the ball a little bit more, okay? So that when you run faster, automatically you follow through it a little bit better. So I'll hit this free kick now, but my body will finish past the red disc. So I hit it. Look where I've finished. So then it allows me to actually get quicker through the ball. So let's, let's look at that then. This is my preference. If you watch Ward Prowse, he'll hit it and finish through where the actual ball was. You ready? A nice and aggressive run up. Yep. Bang. Good, so you might, that's gonna start happening. I'm gonna teach you on the next part how to get it up and down a bit quicker, okay? Go again, hit higher up on the ball. So good run up, I like it. Hit higher up on the ball. Yep. Bang. Yes, good. Hey, hey, now we're starting to get the pace. See that there, that's a goal. Same again, fast run up, aggressive. I want you to be aggressive through the ball, but make sure you're not getting, so imagine I split the ball in half there. Make sure you're hitting above that where my hand is because anywhere there is going to go what you did on your first one nice and aggressive nice and fast bang oh my god see that yeah. that traveled so much the keeper doesn't even dive for that same again same again same fast run up keep hitting above that halfway mark good follow through honestly we're cooking aren't we we're cooking we're getting more speed now it's beautiful one more, one more. Nice and aggressive, keep your head still. Bang. Oh, look at this now, beautiful. I want you to hit one more because that had great pace, great dip, just lacked the accuracy. So what I want you to do there is just wrap your foot, around, turn your foot more around it to put it more in that far corner, yeah? Near post, sorry. Yeah, good, good. Again, don't worry about that. Last one and then I want to come in and just talk about two more things. Nice and aggressive. Speed, bang, beautiful. Last one, can't finish on that. Can't finish on that. But, but, can you see the pace there again? Abs. Beautiful. Oh, you're unlucky. And rest, better. When you have pace and dip, you're more likely to definitely score. So that's always what you want to work on. I've talked about a faster run up, okay? You've got to still control your run up though. You don't want it to be erratic. So we talked about a faster run up. We're following through a lot better. Now I want to talk about how we can get the ball to come back down with that pace. And it's probably the hardest thing about free kicks, abs, right? Take your four steps, or do you like three or four, five? Four, so take your four. One, two, three, four. So the next two things I'm going to talk about is one, assess the situation, okay? Assess whether you want to go up and down over the wall, which is the one I'm trying to teach you right now because it's the most common, okay? or if you actually want to go keeper side, which is that side. Sometimes keepers move and you can score in that corner. So once you've took your four steps, big deep breath, assess the situation, make your decision, don't second guess it. So make your decision, I'm going to go keeper side or over the wall and stick to it. But that's after you've assessed what's going on, okay? So that was that's my next coaching point. And the last one I was going back to what I was saying before is the hardest part about free kicks, abs, is we run in with speed, Keep your head and eyes fixated on a specific part of the ball. So what I like to do when I plant it down, you see the barcode, pick something on the ball. A lot of pros pick the valve. For me, I just pick a mark or something on the ball. So I'm gonna use this barcode. You see how it's like halfway up the ball. I'm gonna really keep my head and eyes completely still on that, just that part of the ball. That's all I'm looking at. And this is where it gets really hard to get the, the whip and the dip, is you wanna connect, and then the, to get that dip abs, you wanna try and lift your knee fast, quick, sharp, to hit the ball and get it to come back down, okay? And that's why they call it a whip, you know? Because it's supposed to be a really fast, quick motion. So when I hit a good free kick is when I've hit it abs, and my foot and my follow through is coming up on the ball it's it's, a, it's an upwards attack angle okay see the ones that we've that we sky and it goes over we've hit underneath too much underneath and then we've just got under it and it lifts it we want to hit higher up on the ball as soon as we get that part right wrap our foot around it but drive that knee up okay so take my four steps assess the situation i'm just going to focus on getting that 
that dip, getting the ball back down. Now I'm going to fixate myself on where I want to hit the ball. Bang. Oh my God. It's not far off, you see? So now I'll do the same thing, same routine. I'm going to pick the barcode again. One, two, three, four. Assess the situation where I want to go. I'm going to choose to go over the wall. Aggressive run up, lift and drive that knee up. Ah, I've got too much over it. But there's still power there, there's still dip there. Let's go, let's see, I want you with five or six here now. Bang, lovely, get in. Oh my God, it's not bad, a little bit floaty. So you're going with the Nike tick, yeah? Cool. Assess the situation. Nice and aggressive. Aggressive run up, bang. Lovely, get down, baby. Unlucky. Drive that knee up a little bit faster. Yeah, follow through. Try and get your body finishing on this side of the ball. Really follow through. Nice and aggressive. Bang. Oh my God, good. We go again. We just tweak it a little bit. Same again. Head still. Head still. Connection is key. Aggressive. Bang. Oh, good. I'm going to tweak one thing slightly. Do your run up again. Right, you happy with that, yeah? Good, you've already sort of done it. Just come a little bit more this way. Yeah, nice. Sometimes when you have to wrap your foot around it too much, very, very hard. As soon as you connect, turn that foot, drive the knee. And if you've got an aggressive run up, you should follow through on this side anyway. Yep. Bang. Oh my God. You see how, yeah, it's so much better. All right, routines in, fixate yourself on a specific spot. Nice and aggressive. Oh, get in, baby. Get in, baby. The only thing I didn't look at then, which the camera will have, is where you finished up. Yeah, test the situation. Nice and aggressive through the ball. Barcode, head still, head still, bang. <gasps> Good. Good, you didn't drive the knee there. That's why the ball just kept rising. So you want to try and generate that top spin. Have you ever played tennis before? So think about how we do a a forehand top spin, you want to be driving, boom, over that ball as fast as possible. Nice and aggressive. Nice. Good. Now just notice there, you only took three steps into the ball. So let's, let's, let's come back to the ball and give me four really big steps, okay? One, two, three, four. So there's a little bit more distance now. So now that's going to allow you to gain more speed through the ball, okay? Ready? Good, good. Did that feel weird though, going a little bit further back? Yeah, yeah but... Going fast and you went through. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want you to try and get used to because you're gonna, it's gonna allow you to get more pace on the ball. Go, go again. One, two, three, four. Good, assess the situation, look at the ball, pick your spot. Nice and aggressive run up, drive the knee, bang. Right, look at the pace you're getting on it though. Look at the pace, go again, go again. Four, four steps again. Let's just try and wrap our foot around it a bit more to get it more over the wall. Aggressive, head still. Generate that top spin, bang. Oh, you see that? Since we've took four, right? You just hit four, there was not one single floaty in there. I know it feels a little bit weird, right? But there wasn't one floaty. One more. Same thing again. One, two, three, four, nice and aggressive. Drive the knee, head still. Bang, good. Can't finish on that, there's one there. All right, let's go using some of the same coaching points. Let's be having you. Oh my God, that's your best one. That was unbelievable. How good is the feeling when you do that? Same thing, same thing. Routine is consistent, pick a spot on the ball. So what are you going with the little, yep. Yeah, four steps, big steps generate that speed nice head still drive the knee let's go same again oh my oh my god hey we're cooking on gas now whatever you've tweaked is working oh my god do you know what was brilliant about that last one is it just span away from the top bin so it had the dip and it had the whip on it one two three four your eyes keep your head still on that spot nice and aggressive Drive the knee, bang, lovely. That's good, you know. It's got good pace on it, just lacking in the corner. 
tweak it a little bit. So with that one there, you've got to wrap your foot around it a bit more to get it over the wall. Pick your spot, assess, nice and aggressive. Drive that knee, and lucky, hey, but look how we're getting it up and down every time now, and we've eliminated the float. The contact point is key. You can do all your steps right, but if the contact point is not there, it's gonna go in the bin. Oh! <laughs> Last one then, Coach Jonas coming in for five or six. An aggressive drive, that knee, head and eyes still. Pick your spot. Oh, look, you see on that one there? You stepped off it. You didn't follow through. So see how you, see you follow through then, you was walking back. You want to be finishing there, so just go again. You want to be finishing beyond that red disc. Just watch a few of mine. Yes, guys, a lot of you asked for my free kick routine. Here it is. I'm going to go over the wall with these next five or six. And I'm going to talk you through what I do with my free kicks. Yeah, and go from there. But every single one is going to go over the wall. So the first thing that I do is I pick a spot on the ball. And that spot, whatever it may be, is always halfway up the ball. So I then take my four steps back. One, two, three, four. And then I assess the situation in a game. And then I pick what side I want to go. So do I want to go keeper side or over the wall? On this case, I'm going to go over the wall because I feel like definitely the most successful side if you hit it well. I then make sure I'm getting speed through the ball. I'm keeping my head and my eyes fixated on that specific spot that I've picked out from the start. And then for me, it's just all about contact, trying to generate spin and top spin to get it back down over the wall into the goal. Oh my God. That was literally almost perfect. So I'm just gonna repeat the same thing, pick a spot on the ball, uh, take a tiny bit off it this time to get it back down. Absolutely perfect, no keeper saving that, posting in. Oh my God. Bang. Bang, that is definitely a goal. I know I've hit it well when I'm looking at the flight. It has a mixture of spin and a mixture of top spin, so that's sort of my go-to free kick. I'm not very good at the knuckles, but I feel like I'm very consistent with generating half spin, half dip. Let's see if I can do that again. Yeah, perfect. That's two in a row, we keep going. And now it's just about, obviously in a game, you're only gonna get one chance. So it really is about trying to do the same thing over and over. And I'm just making sure that my routine is the same every time. Oh, wasn't bad. I just lost my foot in there. Right, YouTube, if I go top left stance here, I want you to comment below and subscribe. One, two, three, four. Oh, come on, at least that's worth a subscribe. You've got to subscribe for that. The other option from this part of the field is to go goalkeeper's side. Sometimes if the keepers have done a bit of studying on you and they, they know that you like to go over the wall, and sometimes you might make the decision to go keeper side. If you're going to go that side, it has to be side netting with pace, otherwise you probably won't get it past the keeper. Sometimes they also might move as well, so it gives you a little bit of an advantage. Not bad, I just need to tweak it a little. The only way that's a goal, the only way that's a goal is if the keeper moves. So a good little trick to do, that I like to do, because most keepers know that I like to go over the wall, is I'll take my run up and I'll have a look and I'll sort of try and sell it to say that I'm going to go over the wall. So I'm looking over the wall, the keeper thinks that's where I'm going to go. And then last second, I'm obviously going to change and go to the keeper's side. Oh my God. Key is with going on the keeper's side, is you actually want to try and start the shot on the outside of the post. And like I said, it has to go side netting for it to be a success. Or if the keeper's moved, then you get a chance. But I'm going to actually try and aim on the outside of the post and bring it in last second. Oh, 
Well, it wasn't bad. Take it.